Okay, so today's video is going to be about a few different topics. It's first going to be about this tiny cathode ray tube that I made. And the uh, sawtooth wave generator that I made to drive it with some relay coils. Uh, it's going to be about my tube tester that I just built. And then just some uh, thoughts about things that I've learned making uh, some triodes. So I have about seven of them here. I have, an, I have another one that's already being used in another project. And I'll just go over the things that I've learned to make them work the best. So let's start on this little CRT here. So in the middle you can see the electron gun right there has a piece of aluminum for the anode. And then back here, uh, you can't see it because of the evaporation, but there is a, a tungsten filament back there. And then just in front of the filament, there's actually a piece of aluminum so that uh, when I operate this with the filament off, the, it's the aluminum that's acting as the cathode, not the filament. And then over here I have like a post-deflection anode, but that's really not necessary. I just wanted to experiment with it. And at the front right here is uh, the coating from the inside of a fluorescent lamp. It was just applied with a little water and then let to dry. This is actually really hard to get right without being splotchy. So I'm going to turn on the power supply and see what it does. Okay, so the tube is hooked up to a high voltage power supply, and I have my tube tester supplying the power to the filament. And it's very touchy to adjust. Because the, the emission is partially based on a little bit of leftover gas inside the tube, so it's a little bit unstable. Just hopefully try to find a spot where it's happy. So as you can see, I'm able to deflect the spot with a magnet, so it is indeed an electron beam, not an ion beam. Even though there are ions in here that are being shot at towards the screen because there's a little bit of gas left in there, they are not uh, deflected by a magnet. Let me try to adjust the filament. If you set the filament too high, uh, the emission of the tube is too high and it uh, it's too much load for the high voltage power supply, so the voltage drops down low. So yeah, not, not very exciting, you know, just with a magnet, but I'll, I'll try to, I'll hook up the deflection with the coils later and you'll be able to see it. So the tube is set up for a magnetic deflection now. Right there is the blocking oscillator circuit. That is capacitively coupled to this relay coil right here. And then I have this one connected to a variac. This is a 120 volt relay coil. And this is a 24 volt one. So I'm going to turn on the power supply first. And the tube is acting a little erratic today, so that's kind of too bad. So that is the blocking oscillator turned on. And I'm now going to turn on the 60 hertz AC. So, if we tune this, this 
just trying to get it to be stable. Well, I don't think stability is this thing's good, good side. So I'm adjusting the frequency of the blocking oscillator. It's not very stable because there's no synchronization, but... It's actually kind of working. Of course, it's horribly out of focus because there's it's a two element electron gun, so there's nothing to focus it with. I thought about trying to add a focus coil, but there's just too much stuff going around. There really isn't any room. You can sort of see a sine wave in there. Another thing that could be uh, causing this distortion in the sine wave is that uh, these uh, relay coils, they have, they have like a shaded pole. They have like a piece of copper in the relay coil that makes a phase shift. So that could be part of the issue right here. Okay, seems to be a little bit better with the high voltage up higher. That filament setting is really touchy, though. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I think that's a good demonstration of that. So I think now I'm going to go over the, the circuit that's actually making the sawtooth wave. Okay, so here's the blocking oscillator circuit. It, it looks this way, this ugly, because I got the, the tube to work. And then I, I really wanted something to put a triangle wave, uh, put a sawtooth wave on it, so I could use it sort of like an oscilloscope. So I, I built this in probably about uh, probably an hour to build it, and then like another half an hour to debug it. So right here is a blocking oscillator circuit. Uh, we have this transformer right here. This right here. And we have this oscillator transistor right here. Uh, it's actually quite ridiculous to use a, a 2N3055 for that. 
because it's really this part of the circuit's relatively low powered, but it has very high current spikes for a very short amount of time. So other transistors I, w I would try would get fried by that very high, very short current pulse. Even though the average power is very low, the peak power is relatively high, so you need a relatively big transistor right here. And, and that's just because, you know, I have to make do with the transformer and parts that I have. So we'll get like a, a very short impulse right here on the collector. But off the base right here, we'll get a very nice triangle wave, actually. And then uh, we just couple this with a 2 microfarad capacitor to this right here. And uh, this transistor, it needs a negative voltage to bias. And uh, it's ac actually quite convenient because when this oscillator circuit is running, it uh, this base becomes negative. Uh, uh, averaged out, this base is negative. So it can be used to bias this transistor on. And then right here we have an emitter follower right here. And this drives another emitter follower right here. That's a, a Darlington based out uh, off of uh, 2N2222 and another 2N3055. And this is a 2N3906. And then I have a 100 ohm pot in the emitter lead. Uh, coupled to the relay coil. There's actually, I built this at first, but there is a DC offset, so uh, I put a capacitor in right here to just let the AC through. Okay, so that's that. I think next I'm going to talk about the, the tube tester I just made. Okay, so this is the tube tester. To measure emission as well as transconductance. And I have it hooked up to this. This is one of the best uh, homemade triodes that I've made so far. Just going to turn on power. And I haven't, I haven't made the labels for these meters yet, so it's just a little archaic, but this is plate voltage, grid voltage, this is emission, sorry, this is uh, transconductance, plate current, and then filament voltage. So I have the plate voltage set to about 250. I bring up the plate current, I'm sorry, the filament voltage. and we get a transconductance reading. So this is the level of the AC signal applied to the grid. And right here is the negative grid voltage. And here is the schematic. It uses two power transformers. This one puts out 12 volts and 18 volts. This is a 20 volt to 120 volt transformer being run in reverse. Then there's a voltage doubler. Makes 250 volts. Then I have a 150k potentiometer right here. 47 microfarad capacitor. Right here is the plate voltage meter. Here's the DC plate current meter. And here's the, this is the plate load resistor. This is set up as an inverting amplifier, basically to measure transconductance. And I have a variable resistor for 6K. It's, it's just always maxed out right now. I, I have to tweak these values because I just, I, I just guessed when I put these all in. And then right here is the grid bias circuitry. Single diode, 47 microfarad, then a 22K, and then this is a 56 volt Zener diode, then a 100K potentiometer, 
grid voltage meter and then a 470k resistor going to the grid. Um, this right here is the level of AC that is applied to the grid. So it comes off right here from the 120 volt transformer, goes through an 82k, and then a 10k, and then coupled through a 0.1 microfarad capacitor to the grid. And then for the filament supply, uh, this could do with some improvement. Uh, bridge rectifier can choose either 12 or 18 volts. This transformer doesn't have like a 8 or a 6 volt tap. It's only those two. So I'd, I'd really like to have like an 8 volt tap because the regulator gets hot. Rectifier, smoothing capacitor. And here's an LM317. That guy right there. And this is a series regulator, so it's inherently wasteful of power. Here's the voltage adjust. And then one microfarad cap on the output, and then the heater voltage meter. And then that goes up to the tube. So, relatively simple. I'm going to test a few other tubes just to give you a comparison and because uh, this doesn't have really any meaning, these meter movements, so we just have to do like a relative thing. So I'm going to test right here. This is a commercial triode pentode. This is like a television tube. I have hundreds of tubes, so sometimes I pick a few of them to do barbaric things to, like solder onto the pins. I did this like years ago, and this is just like a sacrificial tube. So I'm just going to hook this up and see what it does. Okay, so I have this commercial triode hooked up. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but it's glowing inside. I have a full 250 volts applied, and I have uh, the grid voltage set. And, and watch what the transconductance meter does on this one. So it's it's like off the scale, basically. And the grid has a very very fine control. <clears throat> over it. Like the other one I had to go all the way up to 56 volts in order to cut it off. So there's no doubt that this tube works a hell of a lot better than the one I made, but eh, mine still works. And that, that, that that's the best one I've made. I think next I'm gonna hook up, this is one of the worst, one of the worst ones I've made. I'm gonna show you how that compares. Okay, so I have this one hooked up now. Full 250 volts. I'm just going to turn these down. Put it about there. Still have about the same grid control. And let's see. <laughs> So you can see how low the transconductance is on that one. And that, that all has to do with how far apart the filament is spaced from the grid. Uh, the further along I've gone, I've been able to place the filament closer and closer to the grid. This one, it's like almost touching. And of course that's bad because it could, like, uh, down the road it could, the filament could warp and touch the grid. But you want it to be close so that you have a higher transconductance. So you can see how far apart the 
filament is from the grid. See, that one's just right up close to it, so. Okay, so I think that's it for the tube tester. So I think I'm just going to talk about the things I've learned in making these so far. Okay, so one of the best things uh, I learned from the comments was a comment made by Simplifier, and uh, he talked about the preparation of the, the tungsten wire for the seals. So before what I was just doing was I was just uh, straightening this and then cleaning it off with like uh, some flux remover and then coating it a whole bunch uh, with oxide and then sealing it in. But um, what he suggested was to uh, first, uh, uh, after you straighten it, to just uh, sand it uh, with a fine sandpaper. So I, I sanded it with like a 220 grit or something like that uh, to get it really nice and shiny and then only coat it a very, very small amount of oxide on the surface, only a few passes with a torch. And uh, after I made those changes, uh, um, I was able to stop using so much tungsten in, in the seals. If you saw the other video, you know, I'd use like a centimeter or so of tungsten wire in the seals because I just wanted, you know, a microscopic part of it to be hermetic on the seal. But after I made those changes, uh, Basically, the whole centimeter of seal is now the, the perfect color and is hermetic, so I don't have to waste so much tungsten anymore on the seals. Um, so n another thing I learned about is a grid spacing. So as I talked earlier, the filament has to be very close to the grid in order for it to work well. And also, uh, the, the grid itself, it can't be too fine for the, the tubes that I'm doing. So here is a really fine grid that you can see. And uh, that, that had the effect that it cut down on the, uh, the current flowing through the tube too much. So like uh, when I was testing this, it was working, but you know, it was only letting through like, you know, half a milliamp or something like that. So I was just increasing the filament voltage uh, just up and up and I, I just burned this one out because I was impatient and not accepting of how low of a plate current this one had. So here's a experimental one that I made uh, where all the wires are in a single pinch and just the main problem with this one again is the fact that the filament ended up farther apart from the grid. So this this is like a coaxial design. Uh, all of these are like you know just planar tubes. You have the filament, the filament, the grid, and the plate, and they're just all like sat next to each other. But this one is like a coaxial design where the filament is actually inside the grid and then the grid is surrounded by the plate. And I, I just don't have the ability, technical ability, to make it, make the filament very concentric with the grid on the inside and make it the correct distance. So this one ended up with a very, very big distance between the filament and the grid. Also, I learned another mistake, just don't just on in this one, I used metal from an old tube that turned out to be galvanized or something, and it just made this awful color on the outside uh, a lot worse than the, th the one that showed up in the video. In the video, I was able to heat it up and drive that away, but this one, it, it didn't. It just stuck. And I, I overheated it in the process of trying to get the coating to go away, and I ruined the glass right there. Um, this one does work, it just has very low gain, and it's really ugly looking. So I, I also found out about uh, using titanium to write on the glass. So like I, I'm using titanium as a getter right now, and I have a whole bunch of wire. So what I did is I just took a piece of it and put it in a pin vise and rounded the end. 
and you can wet this first and then you can actually draw on the glass very relatively easily. So right there I just put the date that I made made all the tubes and this is I, I'm pretty sure this is permanent or very very hard to remove so that's a very very nice way to draw on the glass and have it be permanent because the sharpie can just come off. So here's the, the first one that I made and you can see how crude it looks on the inside. You have the big big fat grid that isn't being used all the way and you have that off-kilter filament but this worked. Just had low gain. So I'm, I'm actually surprised how accessible this is to the hobbyist, you know. I'm not an expert at any means, I'm just someone who has a bunch of free time and I was able to relatively, I wouldn't say easily, but I was able to make uh, devices that had gain with very, very primitive equipment. And I think that's pretty cool. So I'm debating whether or not uh, to put at the end of the video the entire uh, clip of me testing this. Because when I first tested this, I recorded like a half an hour video of me just playing with it, with the deflection. Like, you know, making Lisa Jew patterns on the front of it. So I might, I might put that at the end, or might not. Okay, so I think that is all for now. Uh, thank you very much for watching.